Hi, hi guys. Thought I'd make a quick video. You know, a pretty busy day, but yesterday was just a beautiful day. My my birthday. So thankful to be here for 65 years. <laughs> that was just a day, man. It looked like since I was, um, I guess, in my 50, 56 and start getting disability. I'll leave with hammers. When you turn 65, you can do this. 65, 65. And man, 65 came and went, and I don't see nothing I, I could do that I haven't done except win the lottery. But each day does bring uh, a new revelation. I am so thankful for that. I was thinking today about premonitions. And for me, I've had premonitions since I was in the third grade. Well, maybe earlier because my grandmother said I was a nervous child. I remember when I was little, she used to grab me and hold me and tell my mother that my heart was beating too fast. She said, and she would pat me and I would calm down. But I was very little then. But my first, uh, the first time I heard this voice, intuition, was when I was in the, in the third grade. And I had lost a spelling book. I made a video about that. But anyway, that's the first time. I had to be about nine years old. And voice just is clear. I mean clear. And the voice was actually my voice. But I didn't know how I would sound when I got older. So that was my voice. And I've heard the voice many, many times. And I've heard had warnings. And sometimes the warning comes so quick. It's like you got to stop, drop, and roll right now because an, an attack is coming right now. Or whatever. It may not even be a, an attack, but I need to be on point. There were times when I didn't even know my children were sick, but something would wake me up and tell me to run to their room. And by the time I get to my room, to their room, they're about to vomit in their sleep. And I'm able to get them up and get them to the bathroom. My ex-husband used to say, how did you know that? And I just told him it was mother's instinct. But, you know, we all do. I mean, you, your children could be far away. When mine were in college, it was like, oh, man, let me. I can't get to them, and I would try to dial, and no answer, but you knew to pray. But today I was thinking that there are times when <laughs> the boys used to talk to me and tell me things that wasn't going to happen until the next day. And that that intermission of time would make me forget what the voice had said. Like, for instance, one morning I'm sitting on the toilet. I tell you, I mean, when I'm on the toilet early in the morning, that's when I remember my dreams and I hear from the voice. This voice says... Jeff is going to try to steal from you. And I said, hmm, I hadn't seen Jeff in a long time. And I just blew it off. And Jeff is a guy I had leasing an office space from me. He he, But he never showed up in his office. He didn't even have a office set up in, in the, the building. But I hadn't seen him in a while. But that morning... Jeff did show up and just did some weird stuff, but I made a video about that. But from four o'clock in the morning, when I heard the voice say, Jeff is going to try to steal from you, that morning about 10, here comes Jeff, he shows up. But I still did not remember that the voice had told me that that was going to happen. So... I was just thinking, I wonder why we don't hear the, get the premonition again, so we'll remember and be prepared. 
because I don't know. I don't know. I was just thinking maybe maybe you don't need to get really quickly prepared. And that's why you got that space, that time lapse, because there are times when I've done things after uh, the premonition, the voice has told me that such and such was going to happen. And I didn't obey or take heed to what the voice has said. And after I got my tail in a crack, I say, damn, I wish I had to listen to that voice. And because today when I was driving, I was just trying to stay calm and I was thinking and something told me that this fellow is going to run that light. And sure enough, he did. And I said, that's what, you know, made me re remember about premonition and these voices. No, not voices. No, no, no. Because if you hear more than one voice, it's something wrong. <laughs> but we all have a voice of... Uh, premonition or intuition or whatever. I, intuition sounds better. We do. And I call it the all-knowing, wise self that could see into the future and that leads and directs us. But that's what I was thinking about. I was so glad I was able to relax while I was driving. I had several errands to run and like I said, yesterday was my birthday, and I had such a beautiful time with my friend. We went to see this movie, What Men Want. And oh, it was such a good movie. And enlightening and funny, and Taraji P. Henson, she really did a good job with this movie. And, and Erica Badu, it's quite a few stars in the movie. But that's a good movie. I would... No, I won't go and see it again, but I'll get it when it comes out because it's really worth having uh, in your collection. And um, that's about all that's going on. Just grateful to be here and feeling good and, you know, learning to live with whatever this is, my condition. Because my son used to tell me about things. He said, Mama, he first wanted to say, he said, Mama, you got to get over it or die with it on your mind. And all I could do was say, wow, okay. So words of wisdom that come from your children. So he told me that. So I'm learning to um, be okay with whatever I'm going through. I call the... Um, UT Southwestern looking for another neurologist for my MS because I, I, I can't appreciate a doctor who has dirty fingernails and you smell like cigarettes and your white coat is dingy yellow. My neurologist is like that. I mean, his fingernails... I don't know. He, it reminds me of my daddy's nail. He he's a he was a barber, and he just I don't know. He wouldn't clean his fingers and brush out that nasty old black hair, or black dye, or whatever it was. But a doctor should not have dirty fingernails. So I I'm I hope I'm hoping I can get back into UT Southwestern for neurologist so I could. Ask somebody could actually talk to me and tell me what's going on. I, I feel like I'm stabilizing, but I do have exacerbations, and and I know it's it's got to be coming from the MS. But <laughs> I'm doing real good. So anybody that's got any thoughts about me doing bad or. or wishing bad on me don't even worry about that because I'm at the finish line and the only thing you could do is push me closer to the finish line 
And I am not afraid. Like I told you, I ain't afraid of nobody. Black, white, I don't care. I'm not afraid of death. So what can you wish upon me? And I know how to deal with some pain. Ooh, baby, I can go some pain, rounds and rounds of pain. And my one doctor I had, he went through my file, and he every time he'd see something, he'd throw it on the on the uh, the table. And when he got through, he said, "This is what has happened to you." He said, "But you don't look like nothing in this file." You say, God has surely been good to you. And I, you know, I don't, I didn't know. Well, people can talk about God and not be religious, but I'm not the person that has all these scars and been through a lot of pain. And I know how to do pain. So that's nothing to be, be afraid of. Because, uh, I talk to my children a lot. My sons, I keep saying children, my sons a lot about death and what to do and my death. And they just kind of laugh and say, Mama, we know what to do. We're not going to have no funeral or nothing. We know you want to be cremated and and we're going to put your ashes in a niche and we we have you in our memories. So we are okay. You made sure that we're okay. So Ain't nothing else to do. So, you know, we all should get to the point where we are that way with our lives and the reason why we are here. And I know my purpose. And it, it my purpose changes from season to season. That was a time when my purpose was to guide and raise my children and love my husband and get information, downloading and directions from a higher power. And then there was a time when I understood what I was supposed to do. And then there was a time when it was uh, when I had to go out and seek and get wisdom. Because my sister said, Mary, why do you go to so many places and do so many different things? What are you looking for? And that's what I was doing. I was seeking and gathering, gathering information, uh, gathering my sticks and my things that I would need. And now that I've done that, I don't even have a... A will to go out, a desire to go out and look for things. I have it all here. I don't have to just go through my stockpile and look at places and things I've done. I said, wow, I remember. So it, it, some people can do some things when they're young and do a whole lot. But I didn't do that. I didn't venture out until I was in my 30s. So... But now that I'm old, I can sit back and enjoy and think about my adventures and just pass it on what I've done. So, but <laughs> I am good. Thank you. Thank you for listening and have a good life. Bye.